this is one of those tools where it's like, don't piss me off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm coming for you. I have some unexpected friends that I'm able to see from our land. Oh, I scared the cows. It's going, baby. It's all rock. Die, you son. Wax on, wax off. Didn't even do it right. <laughs> Here's the toilet. Okay, I had to. I had to. Don't you love this? I mean, come on. Look how beautiful this is. If I had to guess right now, probably about five or six deer that are on the other piece of land on that prairie over there. They're over that way. Hopefully they come by, we can see them. Yes, 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 we're here. We're back at the land. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Today is such an exciting day because today we are about to do our pre-foundation work, meaning we're about to set the string lines, we're gonna dig rebar holes, we're doing all that today. And by the end of the day, we should have a perfectly square and a perfectly ready to go foundation that's gonna be prepared for concrete pouring not too long from now, so I'm super excited. So to do this, I actually bought some friends along with me. Let me show you who my friends are. Here's friend number one, baby. Oh! Oh! I love this tool. Like the power of this thing, like, oh! Woo! This is one of those tools where it's like, don't piss me off, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm coming for you, okay? So this is my SDS rotary hammer drill. It's from our LB. Honestly, when I got the thing yesterday, I was like, it's a little small, man. I don't really know if it's gonna do its, its job, but man, just hitting the trigger one time, like, you can see why, right? And the bit itself is actually a three-fourths bit. It's the, it's the Max 4 from Milwaukee. Like, ugh, woo, about to have a good time with this. I really see myself using this thing all over the property, not only to set the foundation and do the rebar holes for the foundation, but for other things like our driveway, when it needs rebar, we're gonna have an adventure path over here to my left. At the end of the property, it's gonna have steps all the way down. So we're gonna reinforce those steps with good rebar and bolts going into the ground that it's gonna have epoxy, these anchored epoxy in it, but it's gonna be good, baby. I love this tool already. I didn't even use it yet, I love it. Gets me pumped. Okay, let me show you who my other friend is. All right, my other tool, the skill saw. Okay, not quite as gangster <laughs> as my rotary hammer drill, okay? But it's gonna get the job done. I got a blade on it from Rigid that's perfect for cutting rebar. Let me show you my rebar. Got your little die you son. Wax on, wax off, didn't even do it right. Okay, I got some rebar. Then we put it in the ground. I won't use the whole thing on one beam, obviously. What I will do is chop this up into necessary pieces because basically if you look behind me, what you'll notice <laughs> is rocky out here. You can see we have a very steep drop off behind me with the land. And so the foundation that's closest to me will have the shortest amount of rebar. And then of course, the further we get out, the longer it's gonna be. Now we can only put the concrete beams up so high. If you look at the actual manufacturer recommendations, they only want concrete beans up to three feet. So we're gonna follow that. But what we will do is make sure that each of the rebar pieces we put in, regardless of where they are on the foundation, are at least 16 inches deep into the hole. Let me tell you why. The reason that we're only gonna drill 16 inches into the ground is for this reason. This is a wire brush. You guys got that? Wire brush, boom, hello. It's only 16 inches into the ground. And if you're going to set rebar into concrete or into a rock like what I'm doing, you have to make sure that all of the debris that you're bringing up with the rotary hammer drill is cleaned out thoroughly with the wire brush, one. And two, with one of these. That's the manual pump. And I'll use that to clear out the debris to set the epoxy resin for our rebar to the foundation. We have a little friend. Okay, listen, here's the Dilskis, okay? Right here, 
This is the corner of the house. So basically, as of right here, I'm kind of standing in the shower area. <laughs> here's the toilet. Okay, I had to, I had to. Okay, so here's the thing. I could just take my SDS drill and just go and just dig, which doesn't sound like a bad idea, but I clearly have some soil here, right? And that's not solid rock. I wanna see where the rock is. So what I'm gonna do is take my time. I'm gonna figure out my soil conditions for a second here. And I'm gonna dig a little bit to see how long it takes me to hit rock. So that's just about to see right now. Let's do it. See, I don't have a backhoe. <laughs> I could go rent a backhoe, but before we do all that, let's just see what's what. You know what's funny about this shovel? This is my cheap shovel. As you can see, I actually broke it, but something about the shovel, man, it's actually my best shovel. I spent more money on shovels before, and they weren't as good as this. It's crazy. Nothing like just digging some soil, man, just to see what you got all the way. You know it's rocky, but then you start digging it and you, you really know exactly how rocky it is. So with their first footing being dug, it was time to grab my new best friend, the rotary hammer drill. All right, let's get it. Woo, let's go. Okay, got my tape, I can see it. All right. Let's go! Woo! That's real stuff. Super quick, before I finish, I just wanna show you guys something. So, this is the dust that that thing is producing. It's all rock, it's all rock. So after 12 inches, rock, baby. That's what I want. Give me that rock, baby. Okay, let's go. Man. This rotary hammer drill is helping me cut through this rock like a knife to butter. And it's helping me get closer to setting that first rebar so we can start measuring our foundation for square. All right, here we go. Grabbing the rebar, sticking it in. I can definitely see why I'm gonna need that pump. That pump I showed you guys earlier, I'm gonna definitely need that thing to clear this thing out because you can tell this thing is a lot of dust, let's see. Okay, something like this here. About, ooh, come on, come back, come back. Let's get level. So where is level, let's see. No, it's not right there. Okay, so about right there is level there. And the reason I'm doing this, by the way, I don't want to take a measurement for square and have it be off because I'm out of level. So I need to get as close as possible to nice and level. So right here is about level. Just holding it, it's the deal. Okay, if I was over just a hair, I'd be there. Come on, work with me. Work with me, baby. Not against me, okay. I'm almost there. Ooh, okay. That's pretty level. I'll take that for now. Okay, okay. All right, not bad. First stake in the ground, let's go. Next thing to do is measure 40 feet down. Let's do that. All right, so let's tie a little string. I'm just gonna do this pretty gently, nothing crazy. I just wanted to come loose, that's the biggest thing. Okay, so while I'm setting up the foundation, I wanted to take a second to explain my 21 cent story for you guys. You see, my wife and I keep this old bank receipt from 2012, 10 years ago. And it's a bank statement from when my wife and I had just 21 cents in the bank. You see, I didn't always have the money to come and buy property. It actually took me 10 years of being the best number one salesperson at multiple tech companies that I could possibly be day in and day out. 
And once I started to do well in sales, I started making investments like buying our first house and we eventually flipped it. And that money helped us get here to buy this property. You see, I don't have rich parents and not one of my four grandparents left me any money. RIP, I love them, but I had to work hard for what I have. But I didn't get here without a lot of prayer and prepared my field for this moment. So trust in God, give him the glory and put your plans in his hands and he'll make it happen for you when you have faith, bro, bro. So if your family didn't pass down an inheritance to you, it's all good. There's still a path for you to buy land, build something great, start your own business or both. I wanna know down below in the comments, what's your hustle story? Talk to me, let's chat. And if you wanna see a more detailed video on how to buy land and secure money for building a home, comment down below and I'll make a video. Imagine we're at the end of the 40 foot right now and my pointer finger indicates where the pink string is gonna be. I hang it on here and it's gonna give me a perfect reading straight down to the ground. See how that works? Then once I get that perfect reading, I mark it. And then I get my drill, I drill and I do my thing. Okay, all right, let's roll. All right, please stop rolling. Please God, stop rolling. No, no, my tape, no. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, you freaking idiot. Oh, oh, thank God. Okay, so it's right there. Okay, note to self, do not do stupid crap like that again. So right here where my foot is, that's where I'm marking, that's 40 exactly. Okay, move my foot out the way. Bam, how are you doing? What's up, baby? What's up? So I have some unexpected friends that I'm able to see from our land. So imagine when you guys come out here, they're gonna be looking at you the same way they're looking at me. What's up, cows? That's so cool. Moo! Oh, look, they stop when you say that. Look. Moo! What's up, cows? Where you guys going? Oh, I scared the cows. All right. See you guys later. Peace out. So after my cow friends left, I was able to get back to work before sunset and I used the Pythagorean theorem method to get the perfect measurements to give us a square foundation. The home is going to be 30 feet by 40 feet. So 30 foot squared times 40 foot squared equals 2,500. And after solving for pi, our hypotenuse or the diagonal measurement across the house is 50 feet. And that's what you're seeing right here with that pink string going diagonal across the foundation. That's 50 feet and that lets me know that we're exactly square. So today's been an awesome day. We got to use brand new tools. We got to screw up the foundation and we got to do it all as the sun was setting. What a beautiful view. And guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow along as we build this beautiful short-term vacation rental from the ground up. Comment on the video, like it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it, hit that notification bell. And as always, I can't wait until you're here. I just rented this mini excavator from Home Depot I'm for so one excited. day, but I've never driven an excavator before. Figuring it out right now. And I literally signed a contract saying, if I bring this excavator back broken or even worse, not at all, I could lose $28,000, which would absolutely destroy my brand new real estate business before it even begins. And then this happened. 